In early colonial days, Konikondus was a residential settlement with units ranging from 7 to 160 hectares. From 1903 to 1906, cattle breeders and crop farmers um, inhabited uh, the area there. It was a cattle post, um, though in the desert it had enough water and fertile soil. Road. And there's a car coming from the front. Sometimes, if we're lucky, we see springbok here as well. Uh, ostriches, zebras, we've seen once. Um, but yes, sometimes they come closer to the road through all these dry river beds and they make their appearance here, and it's quite nice to see them. These are definitely travelers, probably tourists, tourists. visiting Namibia. They've just explored. Contas and the moon valley or moon landscape. Right, I've got some more interesting information about Contas for us. Uh, dates, 1750s already. So that's quite a while ago. Um, that the Swakop River served as an oasis for Herero and Nama tribes, and it was the perfect place to raise and feed cattle. Later on in 1849, the first white settlers arrived and proceeded to trade cattle with the local tribes. The fertile soil on the banks also made for good crop farming, with produce sold in Walfish Bay and Swakopmund. I find this very interesting. It's even something that we, in all the years that we've been living here, we did not know. Not at all. It's really, really interesting. And uh, we're very close to the point where the last Mad Max movie were made. Or was made at least. All the different rock formations here is just amazing. You can't really see a lot at this stage, but in the next few minute or two, things are really going to change and become really spectacular. Um, it's sort of the beginning of the moon landscape too. Um, I don't really know why it's called the moon landscape. I think it's because it looks, looks like look wise it looks as if you're on the moon. Um, there it sort of starts. You'll be able to start to appreciate the beauty of it now. It's also part of the Namib Naukluf Park. Um, and it's operated by the Ministry of Environment and Tourism. You need a permit to drive around here, but you get it at the offices in Sokukmund. Um, it's normally the best. Uh, 8 to 1 o'clock and 2 to 5 o'clock weekdays. So you can always get the permit there. Which we obviously have. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah, although if you go to Honikontas, you don't really need a permit, yes. but it's always good to have one in the car. When you go um, up the whatever uh, the landscape on the other side, um, this is going down to the river, and you, when you go up again on the other other side, there's um, you can see the the, the moon landscape yeah. quite clearly. There's also a viewpoint, and we will stop at the viewpoint, but there you can see some of it already. And at the viewpoint, there's normally a little bird, a white bird. I don't know what, what species no, it is. It's a little, little white bird. <laughs> you will see it. And people feed it uh, when they go and view. Yeah. Tour guides, have, um, they, uh, they've got little worms that they have cultivated themselves. And then they normally travel with that and they come out with tour groups and they show them if they whistle, the little bird comes and sits on your hand and eats the worm from your hand. So it's quite an experience as well. And then again, um, in rainy season, no, 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 not that there's a rainy season. <laughs> when it does rain, <laughs> once in 10 years or so, um, the little edelweiss, it's a small plant that grows here, it's a paper like very colourful, paper-like little plant that grows, uh, or it's, it's not, um, the flowers are, are, yeah. are quite... We still have a photo somewhere of about oh, 15, 16 years ago. We will go and hunt for that photo to show well, you what the little Edelweiss flower looks try, like. Try and fit in a photo of the, the Edelweiss for you. 
Look at this landscape. Isn't it just awesome? Uh, when they made the video, or the, the video, the, the, the film, film yeah. they covered some of these rocks and plants you see on the side of the road. They covered that with uh, imitation rocks Rock, yeah. uh, that you don't, you, that you can't see them. And also took out all these signs, road signs and things. The ads from Ponecontes Oasis now, they covered those or took them out. And I never get tired of these views. There's so many activities you can do. Just look at it. Um, they've got free Wi-Fi and you can hire bikes. Fat um, bikes? Fat bikes to go and cycle. Fishing, swimming, hiking trails. Hiking trails as well. They even offer uh, bread baking courses on weekends. You can buy um, seed um, feed feed the, the animals and the, the birds. Chickens. And they've got a petting zoo. They had a, a zebra, a tame young zebra called Susie, but she got very naughty. She kicked people and bit them. <laughs> and got moved to the farm. So she got <laughs> moved to the farm. And before her, she, they had a little lamb, um, but she was just as Hans, as they call it in Afrikaans. Her and, name uh, was Rabiki. Her name was Rabiki. And she used to sit on the couches there and make herself quite at home. And they've got very, very unique and special chickens there. Um, very small, um, no. we call it kapokis. Uh, I, I don't know I what, don't know what called. it's called. <laughs> but anyhow, here we are entering, uh, this is just a, the farm on the, the northern banks of the Swakop River and on the southern side have contest. This is the Weizenberg uh, uh, farm. farm, part of the ruins we're going to Go visit to. in a few minutes. It's quite clear why they call it an, o an oasis desert and round about oh I think 2000 and it might be the year 2000 we had quite a rainy season a storm a storm the river came down in flood now all these trees and things this is we are driving now in the riverbed None of it was here. It was just a dry riverbed. And these? when the river came down that time and again in 2010, I think, yes. was another time, if I'm not mistaken, it came down again and it brought all the seeds along and all these th plants just started growing. There was nothing. It there was, was a, really it nothing. It was a clear riverbed with nothing in it. And now it looks like that. We're going to, a bit later, travel down this um, to the, the ruins, which is just about a kilometer down this river uh, towards Sokopmund, and so you will see all these plants again or appreciate them. There's many, um, what is it called, these trees? Um, Pesopus trees. Pesopus trees, and they produce um, what pots. Is it? pots, yes, pots. They're seed pots. They're seed pots, which is really really sweet even people can eat it and the, the animals love that so we're going to drive into the oasis now the there you can see the board the heart of the moon valley I think you can call it a resort uh, we're first going to ask permission to film here um, and maybe have a well-deserved cup of coffee later but that hot chocolate is still fresh in our minds All right, here we are going down, turning into the river. We will see how far we get with our two-wheel drive little car, automatic car. We're doing quite a bit of window bashing with Rosie today. Yes, yes. She's but doing she a, is doing a wonderful job. She's doing very well. Um, we, uh, it is still part of the Weizenberg 
or used to be part of the Weizenberg farm, a German farm. Um, it now belongs to the owners of Rone Contes too. Yes, they're doing functions there. So yes, you can book a function and then they prepare food for you and everything. So it can be quite the experience. Uh, once you see the, the ruins now, um, you will understand what we mean. We used to take lots of photos here uh, of couples and even wedding photography. wedding photography. We had a wonderful wedding uh, shoot here where I can still recall the couple brought their own chaise long along and oh, it was the most beautiful wedding photos that we took. Uh, but there are more ruins down the riverbed in Sokopmund. Obviously, from those days when a bit uh, more clay-based, yeah. so they uh, they a bit more dilapidated. But it's still from those days, the early days when the Herreros and the Namas used this as a, a spot where they could uh, come and rest on their way to Windhoek. But they're quite hidden. They're more hidden than these yeah. ones, so it's not that easy to find. But we're not going to do that today. Today is just the these normal. Beautiful ruins. Can you recall that day when we came out here with another car we had and we got stuck? And oh. I had to go to, to the oasis to ask for help. <laughs> Someone had to come and, and rescue us. Yeah, the woman we brought out, the couple, the woman was, it was a pregnancy issue. And but it yes. was cooking hot. So we got stuck so badly. But you kept we, them in the aircon we car. We left the aircon on and, on and uh, Renata had to. <laughs> Go by foot and go find Clap it to him. Clap it to him. <laughs> and uh, yes, and then we, we some two other things. We did a wedding here. The first wedding we did here, the photos was about how many years? 24, oh. 25 years back. Um, oh, you talking? Yes, uh, yeah. yeah, that was many moons ago. And then um, another thing that happened with us, we came here once. With a new car, brand brand new car, and we parked it up and we walked up this steep hill, and we were just a few meters away, probably 10, 20 meters away. We just heard this bang and a dust bowl of dust, and we turned around and it one was of the eucalyptus trees, one of the big eucalyptus trees, fell over just next to the car. Almost, almost hit the car. Oh, and there, my hand moved a bit with the camera now. You saw a bit of Rosie. But Rosie is beautiful to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Our little lounge. All right, there you can see it. Isn't it just beautiful? Oh, just look at that. And so I think we're going to go to that one. To the hey. other one. And uh, I will show you a bit later when we up there at the other one uh, that there's quite close to the uh, the mountain itself, the foot of the mountain. There's a sort of a graveyard of eucalyptus of trees. trees. It is beautiful. They have taken away quite a few already, um, but still, there are a few left. All right, we have parked up and uh, going to walk up to this one ruin. I think it's a, the more pretty one of the two. And uh, yes, Renata's got her hat on. I've got a sort of a cap on, but not a hat. I should actually have my hat on. Um, but we're not here for a beauty contest. <laughs> we're here to show you beautiful things, and that's not us. And. Um, cook some pretty awesome lovely food so cowboy candy cowboy candy yes <laughs> just look at that isn't it just pretty i mean the camera from where the wind is blowing which direction it's coming from the west side of the sea you can see the the mountains let me just do it quickly Zoom in slightly so you can see the mountains and surrounding areas. And then the ruins. Really? You 
can't say we we don't show you pretty things. All right, we're going for a walk. We're going to show you these ruins as well as the, the ruins next door. And then the graveyard, eucalyptus graveyard, if you can call it that. <laughs> That's what we call it. So, isn't it just amazing? Look at those ruins in the background. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera around now for you to see where we're walking to. There we go. Look at this river. Can you believe it? That river, all that vegetation in that river wasn't there as in 20 years ago. And it is totally overgrown at the moment. There are a few farms um, in the distance. You can't really see it but of the on the river banks they have a few, quite a few farms and you can hear the wild baboons making a racket as well having their say I can see the prints where there are quite a few baboons actively roaming these premises or surroundings. Let me first be on the lookout for wasps because the I was in here once and the wasps weren't happy to see me. Anyhow, this is it. This is this. These ruins, look at the, the border on the walls they created. Very artistic. There's the river again. Up with the eucalyptus graveyard. Beautiful big eucalyptus trees and then the other ruins, the bigger one. This is a smaller one. Can you imagine having a wedding here or a function here? I mean, how exquisite and you have your backdrops. And there's Renata cooking up a storm. So this video where she cooks up something is part of her own private channel called Two Angels. And um, there's quite a few videos for you to look at delicious food. Making good progress. Getting there. All right. This is Juanicontus, the oasis in the desert. Look at that, since 1849. Um, fantastic place with anything your heart might desire. We are going to talk to the owner, um, which is Renee Bart and her family. She's going to tell you all sorts about this place and um, Yes, then we'll have a walk around, a walk through, 
and show you all sorts and uh, enjoy. They have all sorts here. Look at these little beautiful chickens they have. And they're very tame. They come and want you to feed them. They will eat from your hand. Hello Vickers, um, we're going to talk about Conicontes today and we are a very famous popular place especially for our local people seeing that we are at the coast and there's nothing at the coast for most of our young people. Um, <clears throat> we live as most of you know at the coast with the desert and the dunes on the one hand and we have a park, Namibian No Cliff Park next to us so um, it's really difficult for us to just go somewhere with our children which is really a nice place. So we decided to buy Conicontes in August 2018 and we said right we're going to turn this place to a family place. That was the big thing behind Conicontes. Even today we are trying our best to make it a family place. So we are very famous, popular for people to get here, especially with the families. Um, we are also a really nice place most of the time at the coast because of the weather. That's really one good thing about Conicontes is the weather because at the coast you always have this winds or fog, it's cold. We don't have a lot of sunshine except for the few summer months. So we at Conicontes number one have sunshine most of the time. We, have, we don't have winds actually. Uh, me living in Walsh Bay for more than 30 years, it's really so nice to get to Conicontes and you have all the sunshine without any wind and dust. So the weather at Conicontes is really a big plus for us that's living at the coast to come to Conicontes. Most of the people also come to Conicontes because of the good weather. We have a lot of activities. We have fishing, we have cycling, we have stargazing, bird watching, we have bread baking courses, we have for the kiddies a lot of activities like um, sand art painting, cookies, everything that you can think about. And then we have the little zoo and mainly also because um, we live in the desert and we don't have farm animals like the kids inside the, the country. So we have most of the farm animals to teach the children what's the difference between a geese or a duck or a turkey or a little horse or a pony. So yeah, we really um, are here for the kids, for the families. Um, we are also very famous for our food. People come from all over the place for our food. We have typical plain food for for people that really want to have house food you want to eat that that afal or the scarp kop or babuti or a nice steak and chips or fish we have all those really all good food that people still love today to come and eat so we also have a lot of facilities for chalets we have houses we do a lot of weddings we do birthdays we do reunions we do a lot of things for the children, for the school children. We have Andre Ross, which is very famous for working with the children. He is here at the moment working with children. So we are really, really working very hard at Connect Contest to satisfy most of our clients. We have a lot of people coming to Bry at Connect Contest with the tour operators because most of the, the food in Namibia is really, really good, delicious food, but it's still like a hotel or a restaurant and with us, when the people get here, even if it's lunch or dinner, we make a nice big fire for them. We braai, we make braai broikis, we make artapel sly. It's just delicious. And people keep on coming back and more and more tour companies come back to us for having that special braai and people can sit around the fire, enjoy. And also back to the families again. Again, we are very famous for the tour operators that's dealing with children. They come here and they come around about five o'clock at night or in the evening and the kids can run around, play in the park because they are sitting in the cars most of the time traveling. So this is really a very nice place for the kids, also for them to play around and have something nice to eat on the menu for them. So Connie Contest is really a nice place to be, to come to. 
people come and stay here for camping and then when they see the place they some stay for three days because they just love it here they can do the washing they can do the laundry they can sit around the dam where they are fishing we have a big farm pool for swimming so when they get here it's just the whole place around conicont is the valley that they just love they they normally when they get here they stay for three nights so that shows you that people love it to be here the weather is good as i said and i think the whole package that you get at Connie Contest, we have some of the best staff here. We have friendly staff. We do a lot of training. We invest a lot in, in daily training. So people, it's, it's really, we get a lot of good comments for our friendly staff, our helpful staff. So that's also something that we can be very proud of is that we are like a family. We work together. There's no managers as such. Everybody is their own manager. They manage their own position. So I think at Connie Contest, it's... Um, it's something different that we do here. We have a little shop, so if you forget something, you can buy it from the shop. We have a really big bar. You can sit and have one of the coldest beers in the country. Um, the cold is as cold, the beer is as cold as your mother-in-law's heart. So that is the thing that we go about, is that we really have that special cold beer. So everything that we do at Connie Contest, we go that extra mile to give you something special as a client. All right, here we go. Um, we've finished talking to Rene. Now we can go through the premises and show you all the birds they have. Say, say, see, in a nest. We got a nest. And the yeah, parakeets, the lovebirds, as we call them. And yes, then there's an old car to sit on on that side and then we'll take you to the shop little shop they have beautiful stuff there this is the, the bar area they cater for absolutely everyone doesn't matter what your taste is. Look at the beautiful cakes they, or delicious cakes they have. People feeding chickens and the guinea fowl trying to fight for his, his share. Lovely big kitchen where they prepare delicious food. They have definitely more than 50 tables so they can sit many people. And there's Renee talking to guests again. And children can play, there's a, a many facilities for them to play, all age groups. Then uh, you can buy food to feed the chickens as well. Art and the birds, art classes for the kids. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. Isn't that fantastic? And then, and then there's all sorts of creepy crawlies. In the, the toilets apparently that's quite something Renata will take you into the into the ladies hello hello excuse me she needs to see the Those are the restrooms. Alright, then we go further. Let's move on. Um, here you can go to the, the zoo. They have all sorts there. Um, 
there's even an emo at the back uh, we the children get um, some information about what is a, a goose and what is a chicken and all sorts um, a geese a goose a geese <laughs> more than one <laughs> that's one I was, I was referring to one but anyhow um, here you can see the old cars they have and uh, they the organizers of the Raffen um, what is a and tough rally. rally they have once a year for um, cancer. the cancer association where they um, try and raise money for the cancer association yes we're going to um, drive through the premises further on and uh, show you beautiful old truck I hope you can see it the Sun is quite bright and there's reception all right we're going to drive through the premises um, look at the wonderful old tractor look at the old tractor <laughs> they've got fishing facilities as well at a swimming pool a, a, farm dam in which you can swim and um, yeah we first have to get through this through the boom where normal public is not really allowed except for where you come and stay here afternoon sir Everyone always fine and you Mr. Renee said we are making a video we can just quickly drive through and come out again thank you so there we go never been here before. Okay. Look at these people, they have had a great plan for their <laughs> Suzuki, <laughs> a roof rack, self-made roof rack. And there's, there's the, the, the dam where you can fish, fish in the distance. You can hear the, the guinea fowl, maybe you can hear the guinea fowl complaining about something. There's a hen, I suppose you call it a hen. She's looking for food and, and you can also see ah. the accommodation here. Different types. Camping facilities. Absolutely chalets. peaceful. If you live at the coast there here. There you can see the dam. There you can see the dam. For if fishing. You live at the coast and you, you don't know about Juanicantes, you probably did. Fantastic. Look how peaceful yeah. it is here. I don't know what is in here. I think it's a dead end. Dead end? I don't know what it yeah. is, so maybe that Anyhow. go too far. But we don't bother people mm. who are paid customers. Yes. Right on the rocks. Um, and then up that hill, look at the ice cream there's bungalow there. There's a sh chalet up there. Right on the rocks. But you can't really see it on the video? You do, you do, do. yes. Okay. You do. And there's some more. People just strolling along. There are so many hiking trails you can take up this mountain as well, which I believe we will do soon as well. There's another chalet halfway up the mountain. I've now missed the swimming pool, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We still have the little chapel. Yes, I haven't seen that, and we're going to visit the chapel as well, yes? Thank you. Yes, you can hire the, the chapel to get married at. It's newly built, they've designed it themselves and had it built. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Auntie, 
permission uh, to do all of this so it's not that we're just taking it for granted all right here you can see you should start to see the the chapel all right there's a chapel let me zoom in for you isn't it just pretty no, it's prettier. <laughs> I mean, at the foot of the mountain. It is truly beautiful. It's amazing. Truly spectacular. Just going to show some more outbuildings here that if you get married at the chapel, then you also can um, rent all these facilities here. I've got farmhouses here as well. And uh, yes, if you don't want to be there amongst all the people, you can probably pitch a tent here and um, it's also room have, for snow visitors, have, yeah. your, have your party over here. Or just come and have a barbecue or braai under the trees here. And they've got facilities on this side as well, see, I see. I don't know whether that's ablution facilities. I'm the farm believes it might be ablution. But yes, the facilities are here. Yeah, it looks more like a kitchen type of thing. 